Let's Go jump on. right into it. So what I want to talk about is outcome-driven knowledge modeling. Uh, it's sort of a mixture between event storming and event modeling, but as I mentioned, it's going backwards. And why? Because I am of the opinion that at the moment UX is actually causing more problems than they're solving. They are already giving us a direction for a solution while we haven't talked about the solution yet. Yeah, people looking at prototypes, especially those nicely worked pro out prototypes, those are setting expectations and our stakeholders are, without them wanting to, they're already buying into the prototypes while we're still at discovery. So my starting point for everything is different. I think that the real problem why we have UX is because we have a communication problem with our stakeholders and a quality problem of the requirements that we're getting. Are we getting all the requirements? Do they yeah, often it's somebody that's halfway the project jumps in and say, oh, actually, I also have something to do with this and you can start refactoring. So why don't we focus on the real problem and that is fixing this requirements translation and quality problem. And the solution, in my opinion, is outcome-driven knowledge modeling. So what is it about? First of all, we need to have a definition about what are outcomes. And for me, this is a very important one. An outcome is only an outcome if a person or a group of people changes their behavior or their attitude. If there's no change of behavior, how could you have created value? So only if people start to behave differently, you start to create some sort of a business value. So are your stakeholders able, at the beginning of a project, to tell you what the outcome needs to be? Probably not. It really depends on the maturity level of the organization. But you should really push them because here we are at the strategic level of the organization. Yeah, you talk strategy and the strategy should have outcomes and then we go to operations and outputs. So another definition could be, it's more from the government's perspective, is saying, okay, changes in policies. So actually we're touching whole communities with the outcomes of our project. So I'm not talking about, hey, this system has now changed. How do I know that's got any value? It performs faster. Oh, but did we need that? So by really focusing on an outcome that touches a person, you are really focusing on delivering something. And it also means that people become way more engaged in the whole project because they're really working towards something instead of towards an output. So, as I already mentioned, it really aligns with the business organization. So it's a really surprisingly easy conversation to have and really get buy-in of the C-level because you're talking their language. Hey, what outcome do you want? What are the OKRs or the KPIs that you want? Yeah? So we immediately have smart goals. How do we use it? we start with defining the outcome. So this is my actual modeling code uh, tool, where you start with modeling the outcome. And because we've got an outcome, it says, hey, which event is necessary to get to this outcome? Could be more than one, but for instance, in this case, I'm saying, hey, it's subscription started. So, Whose concern is it? You can immediately already say the actor is customer success. Yeah, so you immediately start the discussion about who are stakeholders in this? Who's responsible for this event? And the next step is gather the facts. So normally you would do this at the end, the implementation side of things, but I pull it forward and I'm actually saying, no, if you start identifying basically what your KPIs are to prove that the subscription has started, you gather them here, and then the next step is, hey guys, how do I get that account ID? 
Yeah, or there could be a bundling of information that a plan ID is probably connected to a start date and a renewal date. So you select a couple of them. In this case, I say, okay, I want to do account ID. And that needs an event. Something must have happened so that I get the account ID. So in this way, I slowly, step by step, start moving backwards but always from a perspective from what I know. I'm not guessing. I know that I need this information. It's not some stakeholder that said, ah, oh, newsletter subscribed, because that was all the same moment that you asked this information. I don't need that for this outcome. So I'm not going to put it in here. It's a different flow where that plays. And before you know it, you've got the whole timeline of events, or you even discover that there are multiple timelines. So the next step is then to actually identify, okay, what timelines do they belong to, which events are on the same stream. And what I also added is context, so that you know what business unit are we talking about, or for instance, it's a microservice. I prefer not to talk about systems at all in my models because I see this as a business model. It should be owned by the business, should not be used by architects to get their information. It is the description of the business process of the business, yeah, business process. <laughs> so, and no technical terms here. I even want to move away from the term event. Yeah. If I tell a business person in New Zealand, hey, uh, can you tell me all the events that are happening here? I say, oh, well, on Monday evening we go to the pub. And yeah, the event has a completely different value for them. So I'm hoping to, we could use fact, process trigger. So somebody that gives me the right terminology there, I'll give them a big hug. Um, but this works. This allows you to model the business process without any technology, which makes it timeless, because the technology changes, but the business process won't. And then the next step is that from here, and we select a, uh, a timeline within a context. Let me, yeah, I've got enough time. Why did I introduce the concept of context? The example, again, for, of the newsletter. If somebody signs up for a trial, you have a nice screen, and UX designers will talk about you. What do you want in this screen? Ah, and that's for uh, first name, last name, and uh, newsletter is uh, requested. OK. Customer success doesn't care about the newsletter. It's a marketing concern. So what we actually should be doing is having two events. One is trial requested. The other one is newsletter requested, which sits in another context. It's in the context of marketplace of, of the marketing that they coincidentally live on the same input screen. It's just a coincidence. Yeah, it's, it's a different thing. It's a different action. It has a different outcome. So again, by focusing on that outcome, working backwards, I would never have put newsletter in because it has no value for the outcome. One step further, now I've got all this information and I've got the facts in the events also. It's actually quite simple to go directly to an event model because I've got all the events and the only thing that I need to do is make a choice. Do I need an interface pattern? Do I need a automation pattern? Do I need a, I don't know if it's on here, but a translation pattern for external events coming in or just a view for a report? The only thing that I need to do is select what I need and I can build it up because I already know that it's trial started, so my command will be start trial use natural language processing to figure that out, and you create the slice in one go. And before you know it, you have a system that's completely modeled and then can be used to generate code. I'm not touching the code, I'll just give you the model, 
and go ahead. And that was my presentation. <laughs> Also perfectly in time. <laughs> so